Hi, I want to talk to you right now about how to prove statements regarding divisibility of integers. So I have an example here. This is a proposition that we're going to prove. The proposition is, let a, b, c, and d be integers, with a not equal to zero and b not equal to zero. If a divides c and b divides d, then a, b divides c, d. So the first thing that we have to know is that if you want to prove anything about anything in mathematics, you need to know the definitions of the terms that are being used. So the very first thing you want to do when you're confronted with a problem like this is to find the definition. So here is the definition. For a and b in the integers with a not equal to zero, we say a divides b if b is equal to a times k for some integer k. Oftentimes, I like to write this in symbols. It's a little bit easier for me to memorize. You want to be able to go back and forth between the words and the symbols. So in symbols, it looks like this. A divides B if and only if there is an integer K such that B is equal to A K. Okay, so we have the proposition we want to prove, and we have the definition of the terms being used, A divides C, B divides D. And so now what we're going to do is go to our scratch paper. So we're going to want to make a little piece of scratch area. And we'll start by noting, okay, what are the given information that we have? So our given information is that A divides C and B divides D. That is the hypothesis that we have um, right here. A divides C and B divides D. Now, what is it that we want to prove? What is the conclusion we're trying to reach? We can see that over here. A, B divides C, D. That is our conclusion. So we'll put that down near the bottom. So now we have sort of the skeleton of our proof. In our scratch area, we know that we want to start with A divides C and B divides D and end with A, B divides C, D. Okay, well let's go back to our given information and use the definition to rewrite this in simpler terms. Okay, so we know that a divides c using the definition. That means c is equal to a times k. Now we also know b divides d, so that means that d is equal to b times, I can't necessarily say k, I just know that it's some integer. It may not be the same integer that I had before, so I'm going to go ahead and call that one l. Okay, so from my given information I can get these two equations. Now, I've just introduced two new variables here, k and l, and so I need to say what universe they live in. Going back to the definition, what kind of numbers are k and l? They're integers, k and l in the integers. All right, so I started with my given information. I used the definition to write it in simpler terms, and that's as sort of as far as I can go there. So now I'll go back down to my conclusion down here. From that conclusion, a, b divides c, d, I can apply the definition again to say that c, d is equal to a, b times j, where j is some integer. And again, I can't use the letter k or the letter l because I've already used those above. And in the definition, it just says for some integer k, but that I can't, I can't assume anything extra about it, so I can't assume it equals the other ones. All right, so now I just have to figure out how to fill this hole in the middle. How do I get from these two equations up here down to this sort of combined equation down there? And it's not too hard to look at it, I think, and figure out that we need to multiply those two equations. Okay, so now I can go ahead and block off my scratch work, and I'll go ahead and write my formal proof now. Okay. So you start the proof by setting the stage with what your um, universe is and what your hypothesis is. So my universe, I'll start by saying this. Suppose a, b, c, and d are integers with a not equal to zero and b not equal to zero. Now I'm going to assume a divides c and b divides d. Now I'll follow my scratch work. So over here in my scratch work, I could see that the next thing I did was to rewrite using the definition. So I'll say that here. By definition, there are integers k and l with c equal a k and d equals b l. 
Then I can go back to my scratch work again and say, okay, the next thing it said to do was to multiply. So I'll say multiply to get CD is equal to AK times BL. I'll simplify that a little bit. CD is AB times KL. Now I almost have here the definition that says that AB divides CD. I have CD is AB times something. Now the definition says that the, um, the multiple B up here, if I look at this definition, it says that I have to have B is equal to A times something, but in particular the something, the K here, has to be an integer. So down here in this example is K times L an integer. Well, a moment's thought will tell me that it is, so I just need to say that in my proof. Since k and l are integers, then kl is an integer. All right, now I have everything I need to finish off my definition. Therefore, ab divides cd. And that's the end of my proof. Okay, so now that we've completed the proof, we did our scratch work, worked out our strategy, and then we wrote up a formal proof, Let's go ahead and proofread it one time um, so that we can be all prepared to, to hand it in. So to uh, proofread it, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff and let's just focus on here we have the statement that we're trying to prove and the proof that we have written now. The first thing I want you to notice is that the proof is written with complete sentences, with capital letters and periods and good grammar, you know, mostly. So uh, that's a good thing to check for. Secondly now, let's go line by line through this proof and make sure that each line is totally justified. So let's start. Let's look at these first three lines. So these first three lines are essentially what is given in the problem. I want to just note here real quick that when I say given in the problem, this part here, assume a, C, a divides C and B divides D, that's because I'm proving a statement of the form if P then Q. So I want to assume the hypothesis A divides C and B divides D. So that assumption, that's all sort of given in the problem, what I want to start with. Next, I'm going to look at these two lines. These two lines say, by definition, there are integers K and L, with C equals AK and D equals BL. So those definitions are based upon what I know, or what I've assumed, about A dividing C and B dividing D. So that's the definition. C equals AK, that follows from A divides C. D equals BL, to know that's true, we would need to know that B divides D, and we have that there as well. All right, and then finally those two can be put together in a clear way to get this statement, CD equals AK times BL. Now let's look at this line down here. Since K and L are integers, the word since Whenever I use the word since K and L are in Z, or since a particular fact is true, then a discerning reader or your teacher is going to say, well, wait, is that true? Have we already established that K and L are integers? So you can't just say since and then mention something that you've never mentioned before. It has to somehow refer back to a previously established fact. So is there something in my proof so far that allows me to say that K and L are integers. Aha! Yes, there is. Okay? So that's really important, that if I'm going to say since K and L are integers, I need to have mentioned somewhere that K and L are integers, or have established it in some way. Now let's look at this entire statement. Since K and L are integers, then KL is an integer. So that phrasing since this, then that, or because of this, then that, or if this, then that, that kind of a sentence implies a causal relationship. So you only want to use that sort of terminology if there is a causal relationship there. So is the fact that KL is an integer, is the reason that we know that, is that reason really because K and L individually are integers? And I would say, yes, that is the reason. So that phrasing is justified there. Okay, finally, the last sentence, therefore, AB divides CD. So the therefore, uh, when you use that word, what it means is that you're 
saying that somewhere in the proof so far, you have the things needed to justify that statement. So the statement AB divides CD, what you need to justify that is you need to have that CD is AB times an integer. So looking above, I can see that I have it right there. CD is AB times something, KL, and KL is an integer. So CD is AB times an integer, therefore AB divides CD. So I think that's all good. Okay, so I am happy with my proof. I'm ready to write it up with nice, neat handwriting, capital letters and periods and complete sentences, and uh, hand it in. Thanks for listening.